Hey guys, Rob here from D&D Toy Reviews, and today we're going to be looking at the Transformers Studio Series 86 Dinobot Slag, or Slug as he's known as now. So in the box for accessories you get his gun, which is stored away in his tail, and you get this really terrible Daniel. Seriously, this and the wheelie that came with Grimlock are just trash, they're junk. Uh, I would rather see the plastic put towards the Dinobot swords that they don't come with. So, that's Daniel. He sucks. Get rid of him. So here's Slag in Dinobot mode. And you can see he's a pretty good representation of his G1 Dinobot self. We get some pretty good paint throughout the figure. Some gold on here, on the tail, on the head. Uh, a little bit of light gray up here just to break up all the other shades of gray nice dinobot uh autobot sorry symbol on his head the eyes are painted in this really beautiful blue that seems like it might have a little bit of metallic flake in it i'm not sure uh it would have been nice if the frill and horns had been painted silver but you know as is the color of the plastic isn't too terrible so for articulation in dinosaur mode, his mouth can open and close. Uh, there is a peg in there. Uh, I'm not sure if you can see it. There's a peg right there that you can uh, attach blast effects to, which unfortunately I, I no longer have. Uh, the front dinosaur legs can move forwards and back because you know they're the arms in, in robot mode. You get a, a swivel, you get a hinge, and uh, they can move outwards. The rear legs go front and back, and you can move a little bit forward and back at the joint here, and then the feet at the bottom can move back and forwards. Um, really the only problem I have with the dinosaur mode is actually these feet themselves. They look a little bit weird with the, the gap in here. Um, if you have them extended too far. But other than that, it's it's a pretty solid dinosaur mode. Definitely the best looking dinosaur G1 slag we've had in year, recent years. And so to transform him first, we're gonna pull his gun out of his tail. There's his gun there. We're gonna start by coming back here and separating the back to free up the tail. We can, uh, yeah, sometimes that happens it's like to pop off this guy so here you can see there's a tab on either side and it tabs into these little slots to lock the legs and tail together in dinosaur mode so since that popped off we're just going to open these flaps up and get the tail up and out of the way we're going to extend the legs and then we're going to fold up the dinosaur legs like that come around to the back and there's this bar here that you have to lift if you don't lift it you're not going to get the legs to tuck away you can just rotate the legs back spin that up a little bit get it out of the way and put that bar back so again lift the bar spin the foot close the bar and there the, there's the legs done so we're going to come around Turn the waist around, come up to the top here, and first we're going to separate these frill bits from the top of the frill, and then we're going to pull down on the front of the chest, and that allows us to rotate out the shoulders, like so. Now when you're going back to dinosaur mode, if you pull this too far down, it's going to block the parts in here from coming out. So you kind of just want to have it sitting at about a 90 degree angle like that. When we come down, we're going to pull down the dinosaur's mouth. And this part always gets me chewed up for some reason. And we just, ah, that's why. Sorry, you're supposed to pull this down first and then close up the shoulders. And the dinosaur mode just tucks away in the chest cavity like that. Flip that back up. Flip these frill bits down. You can position the head of the dinosaur backwards for some 
easier access to the robot head. Flip out the hands, spin them around, same on the other side, and they do lock in place here in robot mode. There's a little soft lock there. Spin the hand, and we come around to the back and clean up all this mess. Now, if you want the frills down, this isn't going to lock in place properly. If you want it to lock, you got to keep that up. And there are two, two pegs right here that will slot onto the back of the dinosaur there. But it's not really the best connection, and that's pretty much the only thing that keeps this whole back plate, backpack sorry, locked in place. We're just going to fold that up. And this is going to come up in here. Just fold everything up. And this is going to tuck up in here. Lock onto those pegs on the frills. And then the tail just kind of sits there between his, his legs hanging down like that. And this is probably the weakest part of the robot mode. Because... Like I said, the only thing holding it in place really is these two tabs up here. And it just kind of frictions itself in there. And it's really easy when you're manipulating the figure to bump the tail and the whole backpack falls down. So it would have been nice if there had been a better locking mechanism for that. But really it's not that terrible. Just be mindful of it when you're, you know, moving the figure around. And there he is in robot mode. And he is one big boy. This is a big Dinobot, as it should be. The Dinobots should be big boys. So for articulation in robot mode, we can move the head around. It's on a ball joint. But this, this ledge here that the head is attached to doesn't lock in anywhere. So it's easy to just bump it up too far or too far down when you're... Uh, posing the figure. Uh, a locking point for that would have been really nice. Uh, the shoulders are ratcheted forwards and back. Nice good ratchet. And friction out to the side. And this little molded bit here in the armpit is a really nice touch so that the sculpt doesn't get broken up by this huge gap when you're moving the arm out to the side. I really appreciate that. Uh, so same as in Dinobot mo dinosaur mode, sorry, you can swivel the arm at the bicep and we get a double jointed elbow. Very nice. The hands are on a swivel, which, which we saw for the transformation. You get a waist swivel, which we also saw during the transformation. And see there, I just bumped the tail out of place again. The hips are ratcheted going forward and back. Really nice, loud, clicky ratchet. Friction out to the side. So for forwards, we can kick quite far forward. Back, pretty far back, but you start banging into the tail. And again, I've just knocked it out of position. So as I said, friction out to the side, all the way out. You get a thigh swivel, and we get ratcheted knees that are double jointed for the transformation, so you get really nice knee bend. And again, knocked a backpack out of position. And then we get ankle rockers, but no forward and no backward tilt. And so for the robot mode, uh, other than the backpack, um, I think his shoulders maybe are a little bit wide because of the, the shape of the torso. It just looks like he's got these huge wide shoulders and a really stubby torso, but it's, it's not terrible. I mean, it's not a horrible look. He's a Dinobot. He should be big and powerful. And uh, you just plug his gun into his hand. And there we go, he's good to go. And so for some size comparisons, first, here he is with Grimlock, of course. And you can see they're, uh, they're pretty much 
the same height head to head. Whoops. Pretty much the same same height head to head. I'm not terrible, but I think Grimlock should always be a little bit taller than the rest of the Dinobots. But they look wonderful together. I mean, you can see they, they really, really have that G1 look. And uh, here he is next to Studio Series 86 Hot Rod and Earthrise Optimus Prime. So yeah, they're really big bruiser bots, which is perfect for the Dinobots. And these are by far the best modern updates of the G1 Dinobots we've had outside of third party. Much better than those dinky little uh, Power of the Primes Dinobots that had that forced combiner gimmick on them. And uh, yeah, so there it's, there's the review. I hope you like it, and uh, I'll see you next time.